Fusarium wilt is a destructive and widespread disease of watermelon in the southern United States. It's a problem all the way from Texas to South Carolina, wherever watermelons are grown. Here in South Carolina, it is particularly a problem on seedless watermelons. Most of those cultivars are susceptible to fusarium wilt. Um, based on my recent research in collaboration with the University of Georgia, Cool soil temperatures are the most important weather condition that favor development of fusarium wilt. The cool temperatures slow the growth of the watermelon and seems like it makes the watermelon more susceptible to infection by fusarium. Fusarium wilt shows up about three weeks after transplanting. Symptoms appear just when the vines start to elongate, or as we say, the runners start to run. The, one of the runners on a plant will start to wilt. Usually at the base of the runner, the part closest to the main stem, but quickly the entire runner will wilt and may even die. The, a plant with one dead runner on it and several healthy runners is what I consider to be the classic symptom of early fusarium wilt. As the vines continue to grow, additional plants usually start to show symptoms, again, on one or two vines per plant, where most or all of the leaves on the vine will wilt. The best way to manage fusarium wilt is to grow a variety that is resistant to race one. However, this will not help if a grower's field is also infested with race two. This is the common situation in South Carolina where most fields are infested with race two. In that case, growers should plant as late as possible because the warm soil temperatures will help to suppress fusarium so that fewer plants become infected. Uh, growers can also use a winter cover crop of hairy vetch, which has some suppressive effect when it decays in the soil. Fusarium wilt can have dramatic impacts on watermelon yields. In data collected on a grower's farm, we found a 50% decrease in both the number of fruit produced and the weight of fruit produced. Um, the decrease in weight mostly comes from melons not reaching marketable size. So even though it may look like a grower has a fair number of melons in a field that has fusarium wilt, many times those melons will not reach 10 pounds, which is the minimum marketable size for seedless watermelons. Um, in addition, the optimum size for seedless watermelons is 15 pounds. And so it is even less likely that fruit in an infected field will reach 15 pounds apiece. The fusarium wilt fungus carries over in soil for many, many years. Even though cover cropping with hairy vetch will help to manage the disease, hairy vetch or any other cover crop will not eliminate fusarium from soil you do not see the same amount of disease every year and some of this does depend on the soil temperatures in the spring. However, growers with infested fields need to be prepared to manage fusarium wilt every time they plant watermelons in an infested field. Once infested, always infested.